Hi, welcome back to Environmental Investigations. My name is Guy Shamas. I'm here with my colleague, Ioana Petrosor. We're environmental forensics experts. We've been asked by Adrian, who owns a property here in Carlsbad, to investigate a problem he's having with his neighbors. His neighbors has, have complained that the tenants that Adrian rents out to have contaminated their pool and they're killed a tree, actually, uh, by using some, some chemicals on Adrian's property. So we're here to take some soil samples and some water samples to find out the problem. But first, we're going to interview Adrian and see if we can get to the bottom of things. Adrian, thanks for joining us today. Hi, how are you guys? Hey, nice to meet you. We understand that your, your neighbor is a little concerned that your tenants at your property have been releasing some chemicals of some sort that have contaminated their, both their pool and their soil. They're, they're apparently a tree has been poisoned and the pool has been uh, contaminated by what they believe to be nitrates. Their uh, little infant went into the pool and ingested some water accidentally and apparently got the beginnings of some blue baby syndrome, which is a very serious condition. The nitrate can get into their bloodstream and, and mix with the hemoglobin and prevent oxygen from flowing into their body very well. So it's a very serious concern that your neighbors are brought against you. Do you know what your tenants are doing at your property that could have maybe caused this? We, need, we want to be able to help you out. All that I know is that my tenants have many plants in the backyard. They, this is their hobby and they might have applied some fertilizers there, but I don't know for sure. And anyway, as of now, there no, there's no proof that the contamination came from my property. This is why I asked you guys if you can come and help to determine this. Great. But, uh, do you know what chemicals, what pollutants uh, your neighbors uh, believe uh, are contaminating their pool and their property? They mentioned something about some nitrates and many okay. some other substances. I see, probably pesticides. So what do you think? Yeah, is? pesticides and maybe nitrate, especially with the blue baby syndrome that that's was That's right, that's right. That's what we need to focus on. Yes, so we're going to probably take some soil samples and some water samples uh, around your house and in the pool, the neighbor's pool to see what's going on, try to get to the bottom of this, to see if your tenants are responsible for this, and ultimately you, since you're renting out to your tenants. This could be a serious concern. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yeah. thank you guys for helping with this. No problem. Oh, no problem. I also think it will be useful to get a soy sample from uh, the neighborhood, somewhere maybe on the street, on a sidewalk, just to have an idea as a control, what's the, the background value of different chemicals okay. in this area. Yeah, well let's get to work. Let's get some soil samples and some water samples. Let's do it. Okay, thank you. Sure. Right. So we've received permission from Adrian as well as his neighbor to collect some soil samples as well as some groundwater samples and some pool samples in the neighborhood to see what is the chemicals are that are ailing the pool. Um, I'm here with Joanna Petrosor, my colleague today, and we're going to be working as a forensic team to collect samples to interview the neighbors, to try to find out, to get the bottom of this problem and see if Adrian is ultimately responsible for this contamination of his neighbor's property. So I'm going to be collecting some soil samples. Joanna, do you think we should collect them uh, uh, along the fence line? How, how do you think we should collect the samples? Yeah, I agree. I think we should collect them along the fence line and we should get maybe three locations along this fence line Okay. and uh, two depths closer to a surface. Okay, yeah, that would make sense. If, if these yeah. chemicals were coming from the neighbor from the from the tenants who are applying surface chemicals they would expect the concentrations to be higher at the surface is that correct that's right yeah so what we're going to be doing right now is collecting the samples into these jars and getting to the laboratory immediately to analyze for nitrates as well as a whole suite of pesticides where we think might have been entering the soil the groundwater ultimately the pool and killing the neighbor's tree yes well let's do it let's do it I'll take some pictures while you collect the samples. So we've gotten permission from the neighbor to come to their pool and collect some soil samples and some water samples. Joanna's going to be collecting some water samples from the pool. Um, That's right. I have some vials here. That's all, I, all we need is amount. Yep, and I'll be collecting some soil samples around the perimeter of the pool to see if there's been any contamination from the neighboring properties. Let's do it. Let's do it. So I'm here at the fence line, exactly between Adrian's property and his neighbor's property. You can see here that there's some nice foliage growing on the property, uh, but his tenants may have been applying pesticides at a, at a higher rate than normal, and it may have been contaminated both his soil on his property as well as the pool. 
You may be able to hear his kids enjoying the pool now. The pool has been uh, drained and filled with clean water, so we know it's safe. But what I'm going to be doing here today is collecting soil samples right along the fence line to see if there's been any drift of the pesticides that, that Adrian's tenants may have been using onto his, onto his neighbor's property and contaminating them. So what we're going to do is collect the soil samples at a couple depths and a couple locations around here and take them to the laboratory to basically see what kind of concentrations have been drifting over, possibly from his tenant's use of too much pesticide. Yana, you just collected the sample from the pool. Can you explain to us what, what you did, what your technique was, and what we're going to be doing with the sample today? That's right. Uh, as you probably noticed, I was just uh, getting water into this vial. It's a 40 milliliter vial. It's uh, all we need. Uh, I, I made sure that uh, the water was filling the vial with no headspace, no air inside it. Now it's ready to be labeled. Uh, I'm going to put it in this uh, plastic bag then in a cooler and we can send it to the lab. Okay. And we normally use chain of custody procedures to do a sample like this just to make sure that it's a legitimately legal sample. Is that correct? Always. Can you, can you explain how that procedure works? That's right. We all use, uh, use what we call uh, chains of custody and we record uh, the location, the date when we took the sample, who took the sample. Uh, we record what type of analysis we request from the lab and then the lab is going to sign uh, for receival of the samples. Okay, what parameters are we going to be analyzing for today? Well, I suggest uh, to analyze definitely for nitrate, uh, also a few other general water parameters like pH, sulfates, and um, also pesticides. That's what we we should do. Okay, great. And then we can use the results to see if, hopefully, if Adrian's tennis have been causing the problem, maybe not. Absolutely. We need to look at all the results and try to solve this mystery. Great. Let's head to the lab. Let's do it. So Yana, we, we've got the results back. You're gonna. That's right. You you got the pool results back. I got the soil results back. Let's discuss what we found. What did you find in the pool? Yes. Well, in the pool uh, there is a little bit higher nitrate than normal. Uh, not too high, but still it could be of risk for um, the kids. And um, the pH is uh, close to neuter. Uh, there is no other issues in, with the pool water except the nitrates. And I believe. Uh, it has something to do with all these kids getting in and out uh, many times in the day. Uh, they might influence that nitrate, especially if they didn't shower before. Okay. So we know we saw no pesticides in the pool, though, that we need to be worried about and tell the, tell his neighbor. Correct. Non-detect for all the pesticides, all the most commonly used pesticides. Okay. Should we also warn his neighbor maybe to have his children uh, to keep up showering and, and have better care of the pool? Absolutely. Or I think it's a big influencing factor. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I got the soil results right. and I found out that there was a lot of nitrate at the surface as compared to depth. So we also saw more nitrate on the neighbor's property than we saw on Adrian's property. So we're suggesting that the source is actually on his neighbor's property and not flowing from the groundwater That's into right. the pool. That's right. So it seems like we can conclude today using our analysis and our, our soil and our, and our water that Adrian's tenants are not at fault. Would you agree? I would agree. I would like to see the results because uh, depending how much nitrate is in the soil, it might have gotten uh, you know, carried by the wind uh, in the pool also. So that could have contributed to the higher nitrate we see in the pool. Okay. Uh, we, we need to look at the results and maybe prepare a brief report. Okay. What do you think? Let's, yeah, let's prepare a report for Adrian. We'll discuss it further and we'll present the results. But luckily we found out that Adrian's probably not at fault and he's not going to get sued. Right. I'm sure he would believe it was really great to hire us. Now hopefully all the cases would be like this. Yes.